Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. Her mother and two brothers froze to death and she nearly did too. I want her to know that she's loved, um, not just by us, but by the community and that she's got a whole group of people surrounding her. Now the girl who survived but lost everything is on a path toward healing and hope. We're glad you're with us here at six. I'm Devin Skillion. And I'm Christy McDonald in for Kimberly Gill tonight. Lily Milton was the only survivor after her mother, Monica Kennedy, told her and her two brothers to lay down on the frozen ground of a field in Pontiac. Lily was hospitalized with hypothermia, but was soon released. Since then, people have been rallying around her. For example, a GoFundMe raised more than $30,000, but a different kind of support came from the Oakland County Sheriff's Department. Pamela Osborne uh, live with us now, and this is personal for them, Pamela. Devin, it certainly is. And you know, their first responsibility that day was to make sure that Lily was okay and in a safe place. They did that. And then they got to thinking, how can we give her a piece of her childhood back? Well, they did that too with an all expense paid trip to Disney. This beautiful smile belongs to the girl who walked away from the field that frigid January day in Pontiac. It was a pretty devastating day for everybody. Deputy Allie Michaels was one of the first on the scene and was the one to tell 10 year old Lily that her mother and brothers had passed. I will never forget her response was, uh, well, you can be my family now. Lily's family did grow. We still parents. Captain Andre Ewing remembers the tears he saw in his deputy's eyes. That was tough because that, that little girl was so brave to go through that. He decided they had to do something to help the little girl who'd become a fixture in their own heart. So they sent her, her stepsister and guardians to the most magical place on earth and magic ensued. Even if it was just for five days to allow her to laugh, to be a kid. They rode the rides, splashed in the pool, posed for pictures, and pampered themselves. When they got back, a familiar face was there to welcome them home. When Lily saw me, she dropped her bag and ran up and hugged me, and that's one of the most amazing moments ever because she started crying. They've kept in touch, but this was the first time Deputy Michaels had seen Lily since January. She's in a much better place. She's doing well. She's in amazing hands. So that's the best outcome that we could hope for at this time. Well, and I know that the memories that she got for that day is never going to go away, but we wanted to give her some memories also of uh, something better, uh, another part of life, something that she also also remember for the rest of her life. And we certainly hope that that is the case for Lily. You know, this was really a group effort. 50 or so community members, even deputies themselves, helped fund this trip for Lily. So good to hear that she is doing well. And they say that they are always there for her in any event that she should meet them. Reporting live in Oakland County tonight, I'm Pamela Osborne, Local 4. That's really special. All right, Pamela. Nearly a year and a half after Zion Foster's disappearance, her cousin is now facing a murder charge. There is still a lot that we don't know about this, but tonight someone is speaking about the case, and that's Zion's mother. Sean Lay is live for us tonight with her reaction to all of this. Sean. Christy, this is Zion's mom's first reaction to these surprise murder charges that came late yesterday. She says she had not heard an update from investigators for such a long time. Then her phone rang and it was police and prosecutors telling her that murder charges were coming. It's been about what, two, 526 days since I saw my baby. Sierra Milton knows exactly how many excruciating days have passed since the final time she saw her beautiful daughter Zion. She reported Zion was missing in January of 2022. There were massive searches for her and Zion's cousin Jalen Brazier was right there helping with those searches. Eventually, Brazier was charged with lying to police. He says he was last with Zion, says she suddenly died and he put her body in a dumpster. Last summer, Detroit police conducted an exhaustive search for her remains in a landfill. Nothing was found. Tuesday, stunning news that Brazier is now being charged with murdering Zion, even though her remains have never been found. Zion's mom reacting to those charges. I don't have any remorse uh, for whatever uh, happens in this case. I hope that the maximum and I have been really just trying to 
hold on, you know? Um, so um this is just this is a good this is a good step forward. Back here live, a good step forward with Zion's remains still not found. We wanted to know from Zion's mom what she knows, what new evidence that investigators were able to gather that led to these murder charges, second degree murder charges. Zion's mom tells me she asked investigators, but they are keeping this very close to the vest. She also would like to know that is something that's going to have to come out in court. We speak to uh, Sierra Milton often about this horrible case. Her strength is just amazing each and every time, Christy. Absolutely, Sean, a difficult journey for sure. Thanks so much. A man who says a Dearborn police officer injured him after he asked the officer for directions has won a $9 million lawsuit. Police body camera footage shows the two arguing and then things turning physical when Luther Gonzalez Hall tried to leave. Will Jones live was, uh, Will, you were there when Gonzalez spoke about what happened today and the verdict, Will? <laughs> Devin, the jury awarded Luther Gonzalez Hall millions of dollars for such things as battery, false arrest, and emotional distress. And as you mentioned, this all started with asking for directions. Um, I was happy with it uh, that uh, people I didn't even know, you know, stuck up for me. A Wayne County jury ruling in favor of Luther Gonzalez Hall in his lawsuit against a Dearborn police officer for violating his constitutional rights, awarding him a $9.2 million verdict after a seven-day trial. This case is about, you know, what do you expect from the officer when you call for help or need help? Back in 2018, Gonzalez Hall stopped to ask the Dearborn police officer for directions. He claims the officer wasn't being nice, so he went inside a fast food restaurant for directions. The officer followed him inside. He told me to like stay, leave, so I couldn't really know what to do because he was being real rude. He was putting on his gloves, and uh, I got pretty scared, so I tried to leave the situation, and it just went downhill from there. Body cam footage captured the exchange. <laughs> Gonzalez Hall was charged with resisting and opposing a police officer. The charges were later dismissed, but his injuries remained from that day. Gonzalez Hall says he will walk with the limp for the rest of his life. This changed my whole life. I'm not uh, the same as I used to be. This case was about not just his injury, but it was about his rights, because you have a right to walk away from an officer if they're unlawfully investigating you. Gonzalez Hall says he remains uneasy around police after this incident. His attorney says without that body cam video, they would not have won this case. Devin? Certainly seems likely. Will, has the Dearborn Police Department had anything to say since the verdict was reached? We reached out to the Dearborn Police Chief and the city spokesperson, Devin. We have not heard back just yet. Yeah. All right, Will. Well, today marks a big moment for a gun violence prevention effort Mayor Duggan announced back in March in his State of the City address. Shot Stoppers is aimed at addressing specific violent crime hotspots across the city through community prevention efforts. Groups that are approved to take part can earn grants of up to $700,000 if they achieve measurable crime reductions. Six groups have now been chosen, and Paula Tutman is live with more on who they are and how they plan to achieve their goals. Paula. Hi, guys. Yeah, first of all, I, I, I do want to distinguish between shot spotter, which is the device that hears gunshots, and shot stopper. That's what this is. What this isn't is it is not vigilantism. It is community groups who have their ears to the ground. They live in these communities and they've come up with strategies inside their communities to actually stop violence at its core. We are about to embark on a completely different kind of journey. The yellow crime scene tape that stretches through many communities in Detroit has become long, painful, and unsustainable. Our police department is excellent at getting the guns out of the shooter's hands, but we've got to get the anger out of the shooter's hearts. It's called CVI, or Community Violence Intervention. 25 communities inside the city limits submitted ideas and strategies to the city. Six won these initial contracts, $175,000 as a base budget to execute their plans of action, and then an additional $87,500 in any quarter, they reduce violence and crime by outperforming the rest of the city by 20 percentage points based on documented crime stats. You look at the reports of shootings today, somebody threw a drink in somebody's face, three people are shot. Somebody cut in front of somebody in line, 
uh, and somebody is dead. So much of this is anger-driven, beef-driven. Sandra Turner Handy says she lives in one of the most violent zip codes in the city. Our babies are growing up in this city thinking that crime is a normal process, and it's not. The plan her community group came up with goes to the core of behaviors that beget bad behaviors, that beget violent outcomes. We have prevention programs that include K-12 through education, adopt a lot, removing blight. We are now actually able to test in our most violent neighborhood, this interruption of community engagement, this, this positive interruption to violence. Yeah, and you know what, th th and this is a grand experiment believed to be the first in the nation because of the matrix it uses to actually measure results. That's what makes it, they have other initiatives in other parts of the nation, but it's that matrix that measures results and then you get more grant money if you get those results. A lot of these community, well, these community, um, um, I should say community groups, they've been in effect for a while. They're very, very organized. They've been using a lot of their own funds, but now they get to use grant money, city money, to try to get the work done, guys. Yeah, I remember when this was announced back at the State of the City right. address, and we were talking about how fast they would be able to move on it, and, and they really have. This will be good to watch. Thanks so much, Paula. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, after yesterday's uh, really rollicking rain and <laughs> hail and wind and everything there. rollicking is it a good was one. it was but yeah. uh, today smoothed out quite a bit before Absolutely. more trouble coming that's right brian joins us now he's in for kim tonight all right what are we looking at brian christy and devin tonight the calm before a few thunderstorms tomorrow after really not a bad day today sunshine and clouds outside on tower cam over downtown detroit most everyone making it into the 70s working into this afternoon 75 right now here in detroit 74 working into Howell. 70 72 working in a Pontiac and also 72 checking in with us down in Adrian this evening. Take a look at the visible satellite here. It really does a good job showing those puffy cumulus clouds scattered moving from the north off to the south and east throughout much of the day today. It's given those cotton ball like clouds that we've seen outside all day long. We will keep a little cloud cover under the forecast through the evening and into the overnight hours tonight. 60s by 10 o'clock tonight down into the 50s overnight tonight. And while the dry weather comes to an end today, Day, showers and a few thunderstorms are possible tomorrow before another extended dry period heads our way through the weekend and into early next week. I'll time out when that umbrella is going to be needed for those storms tomorrow. Your complete 4-1 forecast coming up in just a few minutes.